Flowers of the Alps has been a course unlike any other course I've taken. We are taught all these seemingly random things in class that were never tested on because our entire grade is determined by memorizing 125 flowers and all the stuff we learned in class, which is currently on the screen, which is interesting stuff, is not on any test. So I think it's kind of cool that I guess in that class we're learning for learning's sake rather than for our grade, which I truly appreciate. Here I spelled Appalachian wrong. That's pretty cool. And I wasn't able to draw Europe, so I just put some coins there instead. That represents Europe. And I, I feel like every time we go into a new Flowers of the Alps lecture, it's just something completely different. I mean, yes, there is. it's always going to be somehow related to plants because it is a plants course. But in the same course, you can be talking about plant structure and how their, their leaves are arranged. And then 30 minutes later, be talking about olive oil and carbon chains with double bonds. And I just find that hilarious, but also fascinating because we're talking about so many different things at once. I find it hilarious that Professor Elmore somehow manages to talk about marijuana and cannabis probably three times per class, per lecture. And he's told us that there is a legal definition of marijuana. And if you are in court for smoking some other strain of weed, I suppose, that's not the legal definition, not the legal type. So maybe if it's like a different, slightly different type of marijuana, you technically cannot be convicted. At least that's what I understood from his lecture. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding something, but he seemed to say that pretty, <laughs> pretty clearly. I love that the course manages to cover so many different topics, but still bring them back to plants and still be interesting in small tidbits. Like we're not going super in depth into each one of these subjects, but we're still learning some important things for life and some fascinating things like which cooking oils are the best and highest quality. I find that quite useful. Some of this stuff that you're seeing on screen was found out through a little bit of additional research on Google, but I just was interested myself and I thought it would be kind of cool to mimic a sort of Khan Academy-esque video where I could talk about things that interest me that are very much related to things we learned in lecture. I watch Khan Academy videos all the time and I watch science videos that are done on whiteboards on YouTube all the time and I think they're super entertaining and super fun and that's kind of why I wanted to do something similar to that. I thought it would be fun to do a sort of educational video and, and try out teaching with a different form, like teaching with animation. I, I think that's a very powerful medium to get information across. Here I'm talking about butter and olive oil a lot and saturated and unsaturated fats. And then the last part is also kind of interesting because it's just another separate section that could easily be a standalone video. It doesn't really need to be in this same compilation, but it's fascinating because apparently canola oil comes from Canada. It's called canola because of Canada. It's not any type of plant. I mean, it is a type of rapeseed plant, but canola comes from Canada. I find that so funny that we learned that in that class. And I wouldn't have learned that anywhere else. And I'm happy I did learn it too, because now I can know that canola oil is named after Canada. That's super funny. And apparently rapeseed oil has a very toxic acid in it. And that's why they wanted to try and figure out how to breed a version of the rapeseed plant with a very low concentration of that acid. And Canada was the first country to figure that out. So, go Canada.
And yeah, that's flowers.